Hello everyone! Do not worry, you did not miss a Twitch stream. I am reading a, the last couple of chapters of A House of Many Ways here on YouTube. So I hope you guys are ready because we are on chapter 15. We are almost to the end. Yay! We only got two more chapters left. 15 and 16 and then we're done! Woo! Oh, just threw my, threw my focus right. <laughs> Oh, pick that makeup. Oh, sorry about that, guys. All right. So here we go. Chapter 15, in which the child Twinkle is kidnapped. Oh, no. <laughs> Timson rather grudgingly look, took Carmen the long way, confusing way back to the kobold cave. There he said cheerfully, You'll know the way from here, and disappeared inside the cave, leaving Carmen alone with Waif. Carmen did not know the way from there. He, st She stood beside the object that Timson had called a sled chair for several minutes. Wondering what to do and watching kobolds painting and carving and upholstering the object and never sparing Carmen a glance. At length, it occurred to her to put Waif down on the ground. Show me the way to Great Uncle William's house, Waif, she said. Be clever. Waif trotted off with a will, but Carmen soon began seriously to doubt that Waif was being clever. Waif trotted and Carmen walked and they turned left, then right, then right again for what seemed hours. Carmen was so busy thinking about what she had discovered that several times she missed the moment when Waif turned left or right. Had to wait, standing there in the near dark, shouting, Waif! Waif! Until Waif came back and found her. Quite probably, Carmen doubled the distance like this. Waif began toiling and panting with her tongue hanging out longer and longer. But Carmen did not dare pick her up in case they never got home at all. She talked to Waif instead, encouraging them both. Waif, I must tell Sophie what has happened. She must be worrying about Calcifer by now. And I must tell the king about the money too. But if I go to the royal mansion as soon as I get home, horrible Prince Ludovic will be there. Pretending to like crumpets. Why doesn't he like them? Crumpets are nice. Because he's a lubbockin, I suppose. I don't dare tell the king in front of him. We'll have to wait to go until tomorrow, I think. When do you think Prince Ludovic means to leave? Tonight? The king did tell me to come back in two days, so Ludovic should be gone by then. If I get there early, I'm, I can speak to Sophie first. Oh dear, I've just remembered. Calcifer said they were going to pretend to leave, so we may not find Sophie there. Oh, Waif, I wish I knew what to do. The more Carmen talked about it, the less she knew what to do. In the end, she was too tired to walk and just stumbled after the path, after the pale shape of the limping, panting Waif pattering along in the front in front of her until at long last Waif barged a door open and they were in great uncle William's living room where Waif gave a moan and fell on her side breathing in hundreds of quick little gasping breaths Carmen stared out of the window at the hydrangeas all pink and purple in the sunset we've been all day she thought no wonder Waif's so tired no wonder my feet hurt at least Peter should be home by now, and I do hope he's got supper ready. Peter! She shouted. When there was no answer, Carmen picked Waif up and went into the kitchen. Waif feebly licked Carmen's hand in gratitude for, having, for not having to walk a step further. Here, the sunset light was, failing, was falling on zigzags of pink and white washing still hanging gently flapping in the yard outside. There was no sign of Peter. Peter? 
Carmen called. There was no answer. Carmen sighed. Evidently, Peter had got thoroughly lost, even worse than she had, and there was no knowing when she would turn up. When he would turn up. Too many pieces of colored string, Carmen muttered to Waif as she tapped at the fireplace for dog food. Stupid boy! She felt far too tired to do any cooking. When Waif had eaten two dishes of food and drunk all the water, Carmen fetched for the bathroom. From the bathroom, Carmen staggered into the living room and had afternoon tea after some thought. She had afternoon tea a second time. Then she had morning coffee. Then she wondered whether to go to the kitchen and have breakfast, but she found she was too tired and picked up a book instead. A long time later, Waif woke her up by climbing onto the sofa. Oh, bother this, Carmen said. She went to bed without even trying to wash and fell asleep with her glasses still on her nose. When she woke up the next morning, she could hear that Peter was back. There were bathroom noises and footsteps and the sound of doors opening and shutting. He sounds awfully brisk, Carmen thought. I wish I did. I wish I did. But she knew she really had to get to the royal mansion today. So she groaned and got up. She dug out her last set of clean clothes and took such great care washing and doing her hair that Waif arrived anxiously from somewhere to fetch her. Yes, breakfast. All right, I know. Carmen said this. The trouble is, she admitted as she picked up Waif up, I'm scared of the colorless gentleman. I think he's even worse than the prince. She shoved the door open with one foot turned and turned left into the kitchen where she stopped and stared. A strange woman was sitting at the table, calmly eating breakfast. She was the kind of woman who you know at once is completely efficient. She had efficiency all over her narrow, sun-withered face and and competence all over the strong narrow hands. Those hands were busy efficiently cutting up a mighty pile of pancakes and syrup and slicing the stack of crispy bacon beside it. I'm guessing this is probably Peter's mother. <laughs> Carmen stared both at the pancakes and the woman's gypsy light clothes. She wrote she wore bright faded flounces all over and colorful scars across her faded fairish hair. The woman in turn woman turned and stared back. Who are you? They both said at once, the woman with her mouth full. I'm Carmen Baker, Carmen said. I'm here to look after great uncle William's house while he's away being cured by those elves. The woman swallowed her mouth full. Good, she said. I'm glad to see he left someone in charge. I didn't like to think I didn't like to think of the dog being left all alone with Peter. She's been fed, by the way. Peter is not a dog person. Is Peter still asleep? Er said Carmen. I'm not sure. He didn't come home last night. The woman sighed. He always vanishes as soon as I turn my back, she said. I know he must have got here safely. She waved a fork loaded with pancake and bacon at the window. The washing out there has Peter all over it. Carmen felt her face get hot and red. Some of it was my fault, she admitted. I boiled a robe, but why do you think it was Peter? Because, said the woman, he has never been able to get a spell right in his life. I should know I'm his mother. Woo! Ten points for me! I was right. <laughs> Carmen was rather shaken to realize she was talking to the witch of Montalbino. She was impressed. Of course, Peter's mother is hyper-efficient, she thought. 
but what is it she's doing here? I thought you'd gone to Ingray, she said. I had, said the witch. I got as far as Strangia when Queen Beatrice told me that Wizard Howl had gone to High Nordland. So back I came across the mountains and dropped in on the elves where they told me that Wizard Norlin was with them. I was extremely alarmed then because I realized that Peter was probably all alone here. I'd sent him here to be safe, you see. I came here at once. I think Peter was safe, Carmen said, or he was until he got lost yesterday. He'll be safe now that I'm here, the witch said. I can feel his he's somewhere quite near, she sighed. I suppose I'll have to go look for him. He doesn't know he doesn't know his right hand from his left, you see. <coughs> I know, Carmen said. He uses colored strings. He's quite efficient, really. But she thought as she spoke that to someone as super, as super efficient as the Witch of Montalbina, Peter was bound to seem as hopeless as Peter thought Carmen herself was. Parents, she thought. She put Waif on the floor and asked politely, Excuse me for asking, but how did you get the breakfast spell to send you those pancakes? By giving the right order, of course, she said to the... Want some? Carmen nodded. The witch flicked efficient fingers toward the fireplace. Breakfast, she commanded, with pancakes, bacon, juice, and coffee. The loaded tray appeared at once with the most satisfactory heap of pancakes trickling in syrup in the center of it. See? said the witch. Thank you, Carmen said, gratefully taking hold of the tray. Waif's no nose tilted, tilted up at the smell, and she ran round in little circles, squeaking. It was clear to Waif being fed by the witch did not count as proper breakfast. Carmen put the tray on the table and gave Waif the crunchiest piece of bacon. That's an en enchanting dog you have there, the witch remarked, going back to her own breakfast. She is rather sweet, Carmen admitted, as she sat down and began to enjoy pancakes. No, I didn't mean that, the witch said impatiently. I never gush. I meant that I meant that is what she is, an enchanting dog. She ate more pancakes and added with her mouthful, Enchanting dogs are quite rare and very magical. This one is doing you a great honor by adopting you as her human. I'm guessing that she even changed her sex to match yours. I hope you appreciate her as you should. Yes, Carmen said, I do. And I'd almost rather have breakfast with Princess Hilda. She thought, why does she have to be so severe? She went on with her breakfast, remembering that Great Uncle William had seemed to think that Waif was a male dog. Waif had seemed to be a male dog at first. Then Peter had picked her up and said she was female. I'm sure you're right, Carmen said, added politely. Why is Peter not safe here on his own? He's my age and I am. I imagine, the witch said dryly, that your magic works rather better than Peter's. She finishes her pancakes and went on to toast. If Peter can possibly bungle a spell, he will. She asserted, buttering the toast. Don't tell me, she said, taking a large crunchy bite, because I won't believe you that your magic doesn't do exactly what you mean it to, however you do it. Carmen thought of the flying spell and the plumbing spell, and then of Rollo in the bag, and she said, Yes. 
through a mouthful of pancakes, I suppose. Whereas the witch interrupted, Peter is just the opposite. His method is always perfect, but the spell always misfires. One of, my, one of many reasons for sending him to Wizard How, to Wizard How, Wizard Nordland, was that I hoped that Wizard, that the Wizard could improve Peter's magic. William Nordland owns the Boak of Pelamus, you see. Carmen felt her face hotting up again. Er, she said, passing wave the pancake. What does the Boak of Pelamus do then? That dog will be too fat to walk if you don't if you go on feeding her like that, said the witch. The Boak of Pelamus gives the person the freedom to use all the magics on earth of earth, air, and fire and water. It only gives fire if the person is trustworthy. And, of course, the person has to have ma the magical ability in the first place. Her severe face showed just a trace of anxiety. I think Peter has the ability. Carmen thought, fire? I put the fire out on Peter. Am I trustworthy then? He must have the ability, she told the witch. You can't make a spell go wrong if you can't do magic in the first place. What other reasons may do you send Peter here? Enemies, said the witch, somberly snipping her, sipping her coffee. I have enemies. They killed Peter's father, you know. You mean the Lubbocks? Carmen asked. She put everything back on her tray and took a last swig of coffee, preparing to get up and go. There is, said the witch, only the one Lubbock so far, as I know. It seemed to have killed all its rivals. But yes, it was the Lubbock that started the avalanche. I saw it. Then you can stop worrying, Carmen said, standing up. The Lubbock's dead. Calcifer destroyed it the day before yesterday. The witch was astonished. Tell me, she said eagerly. Although she was itching to be off to the royal mansion, Carmen found she had to sit down and pour herself another cup of coffee and tell the witch the whole story, not only about the Lubbock and the Lubbock eggs, but also about Rollo and the Lubbock and this unfair use of witchcraft she thought as she found herself telling the witch how Calcifer seemed to be missing. Then what are you sitting about here for? The witch said. Run along to the royal mansion and tell Sylvia once. The poor woman must be out of her mind with worry. Hurry it up, girl. And not even thank you for telling me, Carmen thought sourly. I'd rather have my mother than Peter's any day. And I'd definitely rather have breakfast with Princess Hilda. She got up and said a polite goodbye, then... With Waif racing at her heels, she rushed through the living room door to the garden road. Lucky I didn't tell her about the conference room. She thought pounding along her, with her glasses bouncing on her chest, or she'd make me go that way and I'd never get a chance to look for Calcifer. Just before the road bent, she came to a place where Calcifer had exploded the Lubbock eggs. A huge lump of the cliff had fallen off there, sending a hill of boulders almost as far as the road. Several people who looked like shepherds were climbing about on the pile, searching for buried sheep and scratching their heads as if they were wondering what had caused the damage. Carmen hesitated. If Calcifer was to be found, those people would have found him by now. She dropped to walk and started and stared at the heap of broken stone ca carefully as she passed. There did not seem to be a trace of blue among the rocks or a sign of a flame anywhere. She made up her mind to have to go through search later and search later and broke into a run again, 
hardly noticing that the sky was a clear blue and that there was a gauzy blue haze over the mountains. It was going to be one of High Norland's rare scorching days. The only way this affected Carmen was with Waif soon began to look seriously overheated, panting, rolling from side to side as she ran, and hanging her pink tongue out so far that it almost brushed the road. Oh, you! I suppose it was that pancake, Carmen said, snatching her up and pounding onward. I wish the witch had not said that about you, and confessed as she ran. It makes me worried about liking you so much. By the time she reached the town, Carmen was as hot as Waif. So hot that she almost wished that she had a tongue to hang out like Waif's did. She had to drop a brisk walk and had to drop to a brisk walk and even thought though she she took the shortest way it still seemed to take forever to the reach the royal square at least she swung round at last she swung round the corner into the square and found herself her way blocked by the staring crowd half the citizens of high nordland seemed to be gathering there to stare at the new building standing a few feet away from the royal mansion it was almost as tall as the mansion long and dark and coaly looking and it had a turret on each corner it was the castle carmen had last seen floating vaguely and sadly away across the mountains she stared at it in such in she stared at it in as much amazement as everyone else how did it get here people were asking another as carmen tried to push her way toward it. However did it fit? Carmen looked at the four roads and led that led into the Royal Square and wondered the same thing. None of the roads were more than half as wide as the castle. But there it sat, solid and tall as if it had built itself in the square overnight. Carmen elbowed her way toward it with growing curiosity as she came close under its walls blue fire leapt from one of the turrets and plunged toward her carmen ducked waif wiggled someone screamed everyone in the crowd backed away and it hurt in a hurry and left carmen standing there on her own facing a blue teardrop of flame hovering just level with her face Waif's frayed tail pounded on Carmen's arm, wagging a greeting. If you're going into the mansion, Calcifer crackled at them, tell them to hurry it up. I can't keep the castle here all morning. I need to take a drink. drink. There we go mouth was getting very dry dry. <laughs> Carmen was almost too delighted to speak. I thought you were dead, she managed to say. What happened? Calcifer bobbed in the air and seemed a trifle ashamed. I must have knocked myself silly, he confessed. I was under a heap of rocks somehow. It took me all yesterday to worm my way out. When I did get out, I had to find the castle... It had gone drifting off for miles. I've only just got it here. Really? Tell Sophie. She was supposed to pre be pretending to leave today. And tell her I'm almost out of logs to burn. That should fetch her. I will, Carmen promised. Are you sure you're all right? Just hungry, Calcifer said. Logs, remember. Logs. Logs. Carmen agreed and went up the steps to the mansion door, feeling suddenly that life was very much better and happier and freer than it had seemed before. Sim opened the door to her surprisingly quick. He looked out at the castle and the staring crowd and shook his head. Ha, ah, Miss Carmen, he said. This is surely becoming a rather difficult morning, 
I'm not sure that His Majesty is quite ready to begin working in the library yet, but do please come inside. Thanks, Carmen said, putting Waif down onto the floor. I don't mind waiting. I have to speak to Sophie first anyways. Sophie, er, Miss Pendragon, that is to say. Sim seemed to, said as he heaved the door shut, seems to have seems to be having some difficulty this morning. The princess is highly put out and... But come this way and you will see what I mean. This is surely becoming a rather difficult morning. I'm not sure that his majesty is quite ready to begin work. Oh, wait, did I just lose the page? No, I just started reading in the wrong spot. He shuffled away down the damp corridor, beckoning Carmen to follow. Before they even got to the corner t to the palace, I mean not the palace, to the place where the stone stairs came down, Carmen could hear the voice of Jamal, the cook, saying, And how is this person to know what to cook? When guests are always leaving and not leaving and then leaving again, I ask you! This was followed by fruity growls from Jamal's dog and quite a chorus of other voices. Sophie was standing in the space below the stairs, holding Morgan in her arms, with Twinkle clicking anxiously and angelically to her skirt, while the fat nursemaid stood by looking useless as usual. Princess Hilda stood by the stairs more intensely royal and polite than Carmen had ever seen her, and the king was there too, red in the face and obviously in a right royal rage. One look at all their faces and Carmen knew that there was no point in mentioning logs here yet. Prince Ludovic was leaning on the end of the banisters, looking amused and superior. His lady was beside him, looking Dis disdain dis disdainful, I don't know. In what was a very nearly a ball dress. And to Carmen's dismay, the colorless gentleman was there too. Respectfully beside the prince. You wouldn't think he'd just been robbing the king of all his money, the beast. Carmen thought I call this an utter abuse of my daughter's hospitality, the king was saying. You had no right to make promises you don't intend to keep. If you were one of our subjects, we would forbid you to leave, Sophie said, Sophie said, trying to sound dignified. I do mean to keep my promise, sire, but you can't expect me to stay here when my child has been threatened. If you'll let me take him away to safety first, then I'll be free to do whatever Princess Hilda wants. Carmen saw Sophie's problem with Prince Ludovic and the colorless gentleman standing there. She dared not say what, that she was only pretending to leave, and she did not have to keep Morgan safe somehow. The king said angrily, don't give us any more false promises, young woman. By Carmen's feet, Waif suddenly began to growl. Behind the king, Prince Ludovic laughed and clicked his fingers. What followed took everyone by surprise. The nursemaid and the prince's young lady both burst out of their dresses. The nursemaid became a burly purple person with glistening muscles and bare, and bare clawed feet. The prince's lady the prince's lady's ball dress peeled away to show a thick mauve body in a black leotard that had holes cut in the back to make room for a pair of useless looking small purple wings. Both Lubikins advanced on Sophie with big purple hands outstretched. 
Sophie yelled something and whirled Morgan away from the clutching hands. Morgan yelled too, in surprise and terror. Everything else was dr drowned out by the high yapping of waifs, immense fruity growls, and Jamal's dog as it charged after the prince's lady. Before the dog could get near either Levikin, the prince's lady's wings were whirling and dived on Twinkle and snatched him up. Twinkle screamed and failed blue velvet legs. The nursemaid Levikin put herself in front of Sophie to stop her trying to rescue Twinkle. You see, Prince Ludov Ludovic said, you are leaving or your child suffers. And that was the end of chapter 15. So the next chapter is the final chapter. And let's see how many pages it's going to be. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38 pages long. The last chapter is 38 pages long. That is a long chapter. So thank you so much for being here, everyone. And I hope you all have a great rest of your day.